Twice a year, Dr. John McDougall's Health and Medical Center presents the Advanced Study Weekend at the beautiful Flamingo Resort and Spa in Santa Rosa, California. This event, which is also available to view online, is dedicated to broadening the understanding of plant-based nutrition and conservative medical care. The sold-out 2011 September Advanced Study Weekend proved to be another success. Here we see Colleen Patrick Goudreau, the author of the award-winning cookbook, The Joy of Vegan Baking, The Compassionate Cook's Traditional Treats and Sinful Sweets. So you're squeezing all this water out, and what does it do to the tofu? Changes the texture of the tofu, makes it chewier, right? It also, and you can actually even see this, you can get close enough to even see, you can see the pores. You see the pores now. So what does that mean? You've created more room for another marinade. So now you've gotten out some of the water liquid. It'll take up whatever other liquid that you marinated in. So it just literally is a sponge. It's literally a sponge in terms of adding flavor to this, to this block of tofu. And here is Jeff Novick, renowned nutrition and health expert, speaking about calorie density. Here, theoretically, you'll lose 14 pounds. One little change. So they said if a little's good, more must be better. So they gave them a 100 calorie salad. They said eat this first, then go to the buffet. Guess what happened to total caloric intake? It went down 12%. Make sense to you? Okay, so if you would do all the math, that's 24 pounds in a year. So then they gave them a bowl of vegetable soup. And they said, eat the bowl of vegetable soup first, then go to the buffet. Guess what happened to total calories? It went down 20%. Wow. Now, here's your test question number one. Why did the bowl of vegetable soup lower overall calorie density more than the vegetables? Water. Water. All right. Here we have Nathaniel Dominey, highly acclaimed anthropologist. Here, he talks to us about Diet in the evolution of the pygmy body size. So for example, they all have reduced levels of insulin growth factor, and they have reduced levels of the growth hormone receptor. In terms of growth hormone, they all are normal. The first researchers to address this question in the 1960s and 70s, their first assumption was that they had reduced levels of growth hormone. We know that to not be the case. It's the receptors that appear to have lower, um, lower levels of circulation. So it's something to do with the receptors, if we can only find out the genes, if, but when we look at the genes that code for growth hormone receptor, it's perfectly normal. So there's something else going on in the genome, some regulatory region, something else is affecting the way these um, hormones and these receptors are being expressed. Dr. Robert A. Rosati presents a healthy way of life based on the rice diet program. I said, look dear, I'm GMO'd. <laughs> right? I turned out pretty well. <laughs> And then I found out, yeah, but they're not taking two corn plants and crossing them. They're taking a gene out of the botulinus bacteria. Remember the guy that Dr. Kempner's father developed the antitoxin for? And putting it in the corn genome so that when the bugs eat the corn, they die. But for some reason, when I eat the corn, I don't die. Maybe there's not enough botulism in there. <laughs> I'm not eating it. <laughs> Neil Bernard is the founder of the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine and the president of The Cancer Project. Here he presents Alzheimer's and other dietary brain diseases. When the patient says, I'm eating a lot of fish, I think that's good for me because it has omega-3, it's true it does have omega-3. But when you take Atlantic salmon, it's 40% fat. If it's Chinook salmon, it's 50% fat. And the omega-3 is no more than a third of it. The other 70% of the fat in that salmon is a mixture of saturated fat and various other kinds of fat. It is basically a sponge filled with grease. And the patient is saying, I can't seem to lose weight. I don't know, it must be hereditary. And the, the problem of, is that you're eating this huge load of fat, hoping to get that little bit of omega-3. Now, a secret here is a bean doesn't have very much fat. Doug Lyle, the co-author of the national best-selling book, The Pleasure Trap, discusses the perfect personality. In B.F. Skinner's uh, day, for example, you would think that if, you, if your mother and father of your, you were adopted into a home and they were extremely conscientious and they rewarded you for being conscientious, 
um, and they punished you when you weren't conscientious, then you would expect that at 18 years old, you'd be a very conscientious person. That's exactly what social learning theory, which is incidentally the bedrock theory of psychology in the 20th century. That is exactly what that theory would predict. And it would predict that if you were raised by hippie flakes, that you would become a hippie flake. Turns out that neither of these ideas winds up being the case. Here's what happens. Dr. Robert Vogel, cardiologist, vascular biologist, and professor of medicine at University of Maryland, presents Pritikin. The original Healthy Lifestyle Revisited. So here are data that say, look at weight. When are you going to have your heart attack? Non-STEMI, that's a kind of heart attack. Look at this relationship. The certainty of that being true is almost 100%. The fatter you are, the earlier you're going to have your heart attack. And for every two BMI units, that's one, that's about 10 pounds, that's one and a half years. But what does that mean? Translate that to me. Dennis Burdett, a national expert in neurological disorders and internationally recognized for his research on multiple sclerosis, presents Multiple Sclerosis, the challenge of blending old and new treatments. Dr. McDougall asked me uh, to speak here and I said, well, what do you want me to talk about? And he said, I want you to talk about what you're passionate about. Well, what I'm passionate about is, is treating and ultimately curing multiple sclerosis. And I'll, I'm going to be mainly talking about what we think we know about MS and a lot about what we don't know. Dr. John McDougall, physician, best-selling author, and nutrition expert, presents The Starch Revolution Diet. As worldwide, people who eat the most starch are the thinnest, most active, youngest looking, most fit people that we could possibly see. Is it a paradox or are we missing something? The human diet is a starch-based diet and for the USDA to exclude it, specifically target starch as the enemy for the American people, the cause of obesity, is, uh, is, a, is a point of view that condemns us to poor health and not a possibility of getting well. So remember to mark your calendar for the February 2012 Advanced Study Weekend. For more information, visit us at drmcdougall.com. That's drmcdougall.com.